you a lot for 15 minutes of presentation after lunch. Uh, we're moving now from the institutional level that we've covered through the Belgian presentation, uh, which you presented divergent trajectories across, na across national countries and national frameworks. Uh, and after that, we have analyzed also the individual level uh, of the needs and demands of social protection and legal recognition emerging from this survey. We are now moving to the organizational level, so a sort of intermediate, medium level, regarding the collective representation of independent professional workers. I'm not talking about social dialogue for a specific purpose uh, because our idea is to map uh, the kind of strategies implemented, the kind of organization, the new actors, new players emerging in the collective representation. So with the goal, with the aim to be the collective voice to this work, not necessary to collective bargaining. On the contrary, mostly because they have different strategies, but the idea is to give collective voice. So the analysis will be transversal, considering the nine countries. So, so the background, very quickly, we started from the statement, the common idea that we all know that the labor movement is experiencing a long period of erosion across all European countries and different forms of crisis linked to declining membership, the declining collective bargaining coverage, the erosion of the capacity of trade unions to mobilize workers, the heterogeneity in the membership across different countries, economic sector, and the, the raising difficulties in aggregating different kind of interests and different forms of uh, employment. Uh, beyond this, so we can add the fact that it's uh, extremely difficult to organize new segments in the labor market, like retired workers, zero-hour contracts, uh, and so on. Beyond this statement about the labor movement capacity <coughs> and organizing the structure itself, we have to take into consideration the economic, social, political background that is transforming, is changing, and this challenge, uh, the role of trade unions, so restructuring event uh, of multinational companies, for instance, the digital, digitalization of uh, the economy, the financial crisis, the neoliberal policies that, that are weakening the role of trade unions, so combine their effect with the erosion of the labor movement. What is new in this uh, background? This new challenge that is the growth of independent professional workers. With the transition indeed to from the manufacturing towards the service economy, we have assisted to the growing number of professional workers, independent professional workers involved in these sectors of the economy, which are characterized by the extreme individualization and atomization of working conditions, by a spatial and physical dispersion, geographical dispersion across uh, the countries. Uh, that uh, challenge once again the capacity of movement of labor movement to, to organize them. So what are the responses that have emerged across the countries? Uh, on the one side, we have observed the attempts of unions to revitalize these structures in order to organize and to try to collectively organize this new segment of the labor market, as well as the emergence of new innovative organizational forms so that we have categorized as quasi-union, labor market intermediaries, and then some social movement. So the main idea of, um, of this part of the project as well as innovative organizational forms have tried to address the emerging demand coming from these independent professional workers in Europe. So, uh, we also try to disentangle whether there are common or similar trajectories that are emerging across the different countries and so across the different institutional frameworks. So, in order to answer to this uh, question, uh, we set up the 29 case studies, 29 organizations representing independent professional workers across the nine countries we included into the analysis. So just to repeat once again, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, <coughs> Slovenia, Spain, Sweden and the United Kingdom. Uh, we selected this uh, 29 organization by following three main criteria, quite broad criteria, in order to ensure uh, a diversification, so heterogeneity in the experience. So the idea was to select uh, at least uh, one traditional union, one LMI, and one quasi union within each country. Uh, beyond that, uh, uh, within this 29 organization, we try to select relevant experiences within the national context. So experiences, organizations that were visible in the newspaper, visible in the political sphere, uh, or that were able to to get uh, uh, some political results, to get some law approved, for instance, uh, and to select uh, 
third criteria organization that represent and uh, are interacting predominantly in, uh, within the independent uh, uh, professional support sector. Uh, the analysis has been based on 50 semi-structure interviews that uh, the partners of uh, this project carried out within their respective national context, carried out you know, between 2016 and 2017, complemented by the analysis of website, documents, and relevant documentation of these organizations. So, two main dimensions of analysis have been <laughs> on the one side, the organizational structure. So we try to pinpoint whether there are similar organizational structures emerging across countries, while on the other side, the organizational strategies. What kind of strategy uh, do these organizations decide to implement to collectively represent these workers? So these are the case studies. So for each country, we have at least three uh, organizations, various organizations. Interestingly, we have several quasi unions, several LMI. Examples of uh, platform cooperativism, professional association, movement, <coughs> and trade unions. So the main exercise and the main difficulties were to try to find some common dimension and common trajectories across the 29 case studies. In terms of organizational structure, then a first dimension of analysis is the time frame. What we have observed in the analysis is that in most of the cases, this organization has been recently created, predominantly in the last 15 years. And interestingly, we can observe that uh, the revitalization, the creation of a dog structure by the trade union, so the renewal of the trade union structure occurred uh, after the emergence of innovative organizations. So this might let us think that innovative organizations have emerged uh, as an immediate response to the to the growing of this labor market segment, like for instance, Mark May 1998, ACTA in Italy, the Association of Consultants in the Tertiary Advanced Sector, IPSE, the Association of Independent Professional Workers in the UK, or YAPTA, the LMIs in the Netherlands. So they all emerged between the end of the 90s, beginning of 2000, while the renewal of trade unions organization, the renewal of trade unions structure, occurred later on. Uh, during the last year, like in the case of Vivace, that is this online community created by the Italian Union Federation CISL, or the CSG created by the Belgian Christian Trade Union, or the Platform Union launched in France by the SFDT in 2016. So very recent creation. A second dimension of analysis that is common across the countries is the trajectory of creation. Uh, most of the traditional organizations, so trade unions, uh, implement a top-down revitalization of the structure. So, at top-down level, they decide to create maybe a top structure to recruit these workers. While conversely, the innovative organization like Quasi Union and LMIs emerge from the top-bottom-up initiative of um, of members of self-employed workers. This is, for instance, the case of Smart Bay, Smart Kit, Smart Day, or ACTA in, uh, in Italy. And this is, again, once again, common across the nine countries. In terms of organizational structure, internal structure, despite uh, our expectation, most of the organization, also the newest one, opted for formalized and hierarchical structure. So they all opted for having a board that take the decision and decide the lines for organizing. All the exceptions are represented by some social movement like Club the Movement for Autonomous and Precarious Workers in Italy or the Movement for Distant Work in Slovenia and online communities. That is another interesting phenomenon emerging, increasingly emerging across countries like uh, uh, the Platform Union in France launched by the CFDT and the Chile, once again the online community Vivace launched weekly by CISL that opted for an online network without any kind of empirical or physical uh, structure so far to this thesis that we just recently created. Uh, fourth dimension of analysis, the type of membership. Uh, Unlike traditional unions that in several cases organized by economic sector or industry, this kind of organization predominantly organized across um, the whole segment of independent professional work. So independent professional work is per se a condition for being categorized within the same uh, cluster, within the same category, within the same organization. So rather than focusing on a specific profession or economic sector of activity, they organize heterogeneous uh, workers from different sectors within the same category. 
This is because uh, the goal was to pursue social rights, legal recognition, social protection for self-employed per se as a characteristic, rather than specific recognition for different categories of uh, economic activity. Also in this case we have few exceptions, like uh, some professional associations that of course are organized within the industry, like the case of journalists, actors, musicians, and in this case, interestingly, this association, these unions, are uh, grouped together, organized together, employees are self-employed, but the self-employed uh, segment represent the majority. The Association of Professional Journalists, for instance, in Belgium, uh, is made by 70% of self-employed. The Musician Union in the UK is made by 90% of self-employed, and the same for equity, the Union for Actors in the UK. Moving then to strategies, what are the main strategies implemented and uh, adopted by this organization to give collective voice to some of the professional? A first model that has emerged is the servicing model. So the provision of services represents uh, the main strategy to recruit and to organize workers. So we can then debate whether the provision of services is a strategy to provide collective representation or not. Anyway, this is for sure an important trajectory that has emerged. Different kinds of services are provided <coughs> from fiscal and accounting services, legal advice, administrative support, training, personalized assistance, customized insurance packages, and so on. This is the case of traditional union as well as innovative forms. And interestingly, we know the case of SMART, that is a form of community mutualism which provides then uh, specific uh, uh, services like mutual guaranteed fund, microcredit subsidies, uh, which has extremely interesting experience. <coughs> Beyond servicing, there is another uh, main dominant model emerging, that is the lobbying one. Uh, other organization decided to focus their strategies on the advocacy, the lobbying action towards government, public, uh, uh, public opinion, public administration, parliaments, uh, policy makers, and so on with good results as well. This is the case, for instance, in Italy, the association ACTA uh, lobbied and obtained through the support and within a wider coalition the approval of, of the Jobs Act for Self-Employed in 2017. Uh, the German Association of uh, Translators, the BDU, got the approval of the German Trade Coordination Compensation Act that has to do with the remuneration for translators. And, uh, the LMI is at home in the, in the Netherlands, for instance, has a seat, so can sit in the Dutch Socioeconomic Council, so as a, a dominant position, so as a specific visibility at national level. Interestingly, in order to carry out uh, captivating innovative forms of lobbying, this organization, in particular the innovative ones like the Cossack Union, adopted uh, innovative campaigns online through the use of social networks like Twitter or uh, Facebook with interesting and funny hashtags, like the case uh, Work Not Play, used by the Musician Union in, uh, in the UK in order to get her pay for musicians. So. Uh, a third strategy combines the two previous. So the integrated strategy see the adoption of the servicing model as a way mainly to recruit workers. So the provision of service is the first entry for workers in order to be in contact with this organization, combined then with lobbying activities. This is used by different associations like Ipsa in the UK, Wata in Spain, Fede in France, the Association of Professional Journalists in Belgium. And I've reported here an interesting quote from the trade union, German trade union Verdi, that uh, quite clearly express what do they mean by integrated strategies. We advise to freelancers and we also make a political and trade union work. Our model is not that of freelancer union in the US. We do not believe that a union can exist only providing services and benefits connected to private insurance. It obviously is good. You can offer an advantageous health insurance in a country where developed welfare is mainly managed by the private market, but it is not enough to call union that organization. We often explain that part of our activities deal with the discussion of social rights. Obviously, no one pays only for making pleasant conversation. That's the reason why useful services are needed. At the same time, you have to be a little more than a service if you want to act as a union do. And uh, the union must be a little bit more political to attract freelancers. And this is kind of an intermediate position between the servicing model and the, and the lobby one. Collective bargaining, as what we discussed also this morning, uh, has been uh, opted out, uh, been selected as a strategy only in few cases. 
Uh, and these are the case of the Musician Union in the UK and Equity, the union for actors. So, this occupational union in the creative industry are able to sign collective agreement with single employers uh, with whom they negotiate the minimum fee, uh, the transfer and collective property rights, some social protection. And also in this case, I reported a quote from Equity where they explain what kind of benefit they negotiate within the collective agreements. So we look at things like working hours, very really important in the creative sector, often periods are very, very intense for people working our sector. <coughs> we look at the structure of the working day, start time, finish time, social benefits, time payments, uh, also for Sunday performance, generally for weekend working, overtime payments, and things like that. So it's just a traditional collective agreement as you can find in a subordinate employment relationship. Finally, the last strategy, very, very important that has emerged from our analysis is the coalition building. So the participation to more or less structure and formal forms of partnership and coalition has emerged as a fundamental strategy in order to give collective voice. So, and we pointed out two main kind of coalition. On the one side, we have industry-wide or sector-wide coalitions. That means occupational sector organizations that join together, that participate in this uh, partnership with association within the same uh, economic sector within the same country to pursue specific campaign for that economic sector. Just among other, an example is the Association of Professional Journalists that joined the Journalist Union in Belgium or the various French associations within the design industry that together create this partnership that lobby and organize for designers specifically. The second type of coalition is instead coalition building on self-employment rights. So a wider type of coalition built to, to pursue and to lobby for general uh, rights for self-employment. In this case, we have the example in Italy of a wide coalition, including second level association movement, uh, quasi union, union, that lobbied for the approval of the Jobs Act for self employed workers. That was an important achievement in Italy. In the UK, we have the example of the IPSE, the Association of Independent Professionals, that together with the CBI, the Confederation of British Industry, and the Recruitment and Employment Confederation, lobbied together towards the government. So just to draw some conclusions from this analysis, uh, we can observe, first of all, some similar trajectories, so similar, dyna similar dynamics across the nine countries, despite institutional differences and difference in the social protection system and institutional framework. In all the countries, we have the proliferation not only of new trade unions that try to organize to enter into this new segment of the labor market, but the proliferation of new innovative organizations. Quasi union and LMIs have been detected across, mainly across all the countries. That is very important. So these new players uh, play a core role in the collective representation of this new segment. As I said, trade union seems to be a bit mm, less reactive compared to the new organization. So the action of revitalization or inclusion of this segment within their categories uh, uh, was belated compared to the action of innovative structure uh, that bottom-up emerged quite immediately. Uh, interestingly, once again, the trade union created a long structure. So they decided to separate this new constituency from the traditional one of employees. Uh, an important new model that is emerging, whether we can call it model for collective representation, is the servicing one. So the provision of service represents a way to to provide what the literature calls functional equivalent to social protection. So where the legal system, the social protection system is not providing a specific kind of benefit to these workers, this organization can have this mutual function to, to fill the gap, let's say. Another conclusion, comparative conclusion, is the transnational emulation. So taking examples from other countries from the action of other organizations, seems to be a good way, a good practice that can be replicated. The example of SMART, I think is quite telling, since uh, it has been created in Belgium and then was transferred to the this organization in other countries, like in Italy, in Germany, in France uh, as well. Other organizations instead are affiliated to an international European federation, like APIPA, where all the quasi union we analyze are affiliated in order to jointly lobby also at European level. 
Importantly, it seems that solidarity has been to built again from below. The emergence of all these bottom-up organizations uh, seems to point towards the idea that uh, top-down initiatives might not always fit the needs of these workers that decide to self-organize from below. So solidarity comes really from the action of these individual workers that decide to join together and create this new organization. It seems to be also quite effective given the, the results. Mm -hmm. Again, super important, the creation of alliances and coalitions. So the creation of coalition and partnerships seems to be the dominating model uh, so far for organizing these workers. Since they are optimized, individualized, they are scattered, geographically scattered, and uh, physically dispersed <coughs> across the country, uh, the, the concept of membership does not apply. So being represented for this organization is particularly difficult. And therefore, it's important for this organization to create membership and partnership as a way to access to new constituencies, to enlarge the capacity to represent and their voice, and to strengthen their capacity, their mobilization capacity in the country. And finally, what seems to be, again, important is the mutual acknowledgement and uh, having a shared understanding of what are the problems. So what are actually the needs emerging and the kind of demands emerging from this, uh, from this work in order to help uh, to provide uh, appropriate uh, responses. So thank you so much.